Hi guys, I'm gonna have a walk around the lake. Uh, it might take a while because it's it's fairly big. As a walk around, I'm gonna be telling you a few bits and bobs about it. And also when I come to edit this, I'll be putting all the costs in there as well. All right then, so it's uh, the hottest part of the day, my usual trick. It's gonna be Betty Swallocks. Let's go and have a walk around. We've got a nice cool breeze. So hopefully we'll get around in one piece. Here's the entrance road. If I remember correctly, 41 truckloads were delivered down here. And we've had one good drop of rain since it was put in. And it's leveled off nicely. There's a few boulders on the side here and there, but uh, they're all right. Not bothered about that. So the main purpose of this road was for delivering food for the goats and delivering goats selling goats so uh, any any vehicles can come straight up to goat island and drive onto there and make loading and unloading a lot easier it's also good for us because it gives us a clear access way not only to get on the island from here but also from our raised pond area So at the end of this road here, before there was a hell of a drop, you see on the, the left hand side there. And that was the, the scene of where I skipped down there one time and it landed on a roofing nail. So now we can just walk straight onto here. A nice gentle slope up to the raised bank area. and straight onto the island. Right, so the first swim down here. This one is to be named Rat Twatter Deep, for obvious reasons why. If you've not watched the lake construction video series, then you missed out on Macro Man, um, basically twatting about seven rats with his stick of sugar cane. He jumped out of his, his digger and uh, gave them all a smacking and uh, took them out to his missus who was very pleased with him. So that's the first swim. Uh, we've, we've only got three main swims planned and in each swim we're going to build a raised area with a roof and you can put, put a pop-up tent on there underneath or if the weather weather permitting, just a uh, mosquito tent. And hopefully, hopefully, finances permitting, we'll run a cable to it uh, off the solar system if we can beef that up a little bit. So that you can have a fan on there and uh, charge your mobile phone, have a bit of light as well. Okay, so we're coming to quite a, a nice area of water here. Again, remember it, we are in the height of the dry season, an extra dry, dry season, an extra long, dry, dry season. So when this fills up, it's gonna, it's gonna look a lot, lot bigger, but it's not bad now. Okay, so here we go. This swim, it's called the Glory Hole Swim, and if you watch Macro Man digging, he left a long trench somewhere in there. Remember, fishing guides will be available, and there's a uh, potentially highly productive glory hole there. So, where we've got planned for the, the fishing area down here, just get behind where where I would like to fish from, if I was uh, coming for a day's angling, is here. So we're going to put some steps in going down here. And short chuck into the glory hole. A bit more of a chuck to get into the trench if you can find it. But if you want to fish the far bank, that's a fair old chuck over there. So you will be able to see 
anyone else fishing opposite you in Ratwater Deep, uh, but you shouldn't be hitting each other with your leads. So that should be good. Uh, I quite like this swim, or this potential swim, because for most of the afternoon, this tree here creates a, a nice bit of shade over the water. You can see vegetation starting to poke its head through on the other side. That was the old grass that got covered up by the soil that came out of the, uh, the excavation. There's even a little bit coming up up here now as well. The goats are getting out here for about an hour, hour and a half a day. So here's the remnants of the old dam or old dam number one. You can see there's still a, a little bit of debris in there. It was quite hard for him to get it out once once he dug into there and the water started shooting through. And he's done a good job. Uh, I don't know whether to name this bit here. This is about the only bit that's up for grabs, I suppose. Um, I did think about calling it the dire, as in dire straits, because it's probably the straightest bit on our on our lake, but I'm, I'm not sure. But there you go. If, if we're telling you where to go, if we say you want to fish, you know, near the old dam one and old dam two, which is where it hooks around there, we'll go around there in a minute. Um, you've got rough ground, so some of the fish will like to, to be hanging around there. don't anticipate that we're gonna get absolutely hundreds of people fishing here at the same time so even if you've set up in Ratswater Deep uh, you can have a quick dip in the glory hole uh, and then you can go mobile and just have a fish uh, wherever you fancy certainly if you're gonna have a go for the snakehead and you want to be doing lure fishing you want to you want to pack your bag light and uh, just have a walk round so here's the old Dam 2 area, so there's a bit of rough ground in here. Right. Here. Well, here is Macroman Point. A nice expanse of water here as well. Don't forget as the water level increases uh, you're gonna get a lot lot bigger expanse of water. It's gonna increase I don't know about four meters width, a couple of meters either side. So the swim in here. This is to be called Poacher's Nook basically because it's the furthest point away from the house and if I was a poacher, which of course I would never be, uh, this is where I would be raping the lake from. Now this, this end has never ever flooded. As you can see on the right hand side the gradient of the shelf, it comes up higher this end. So we don't really need to do a raised platform fishing or camping area here. Uh, but it will be, um, it will have a roof on there and somewhere to pop your tent un underneath. So it's a fair old distance from the house, but if you're anything like me and Toon, when you're fishing, I, I don't like to be near other people. We might even put a bell at each, at each designated swim, just ring the bell if you, uh, you want to put an order in, but ideally just give us a quick call and we can, we can bring you over uh, one of our cheeky smoothie cocktails no problem or well, we can bring your food to your swim you can see the hyacinth starting to take hold now want to get quite a lot of that in here uh, we're putting some feelers out for some lilies and some canners as well to get the canners growing around the outside that would look nice and there are going to be trees planted along the shelf all around the lake so we can get a little bit of shade going over the water 
So if you're not very good with your casting accuracy, uh, you may want to get a little bit of practice in before you come, because otherwise your swim freezer and your floats and your rooks are going to end up in the trees. It's uh, going to be proper fishing. Now, this area down here where all the junk is, that's where the road, the original access road, was onto the island. So, the old road. That's what this bit's called. Again, there's some rough ground down there. So once we get a bit of depth to water, that should hold a few fish just down here. Here's the old road. It's not a bad walk, is it? Imagine it all planted up and along this road, all the way around the, the high bank, it's all going to be grassed. So the shelves are going to be planted up, the banks, even the sides are going to be planted up, probably with something like gatin, which is a legume, fast growing legume. It's basically a weed out here, but the goats love that. Again, down here as well, it's rough old ground, uh, but these, these legumes grow very, very quickly and they can survive in poor soil conditions. I haven't got a name for this bit, but it is it has been widened a little bit, same as the straight or the dyer. And there's there's old Twiggy, <laughs> the famous tree, famous lady tree. So if you fancy uh, wiggling your worm underneath Twiggy, you're more than welcome to. This bit should hold some fish in the future because Macro Man put a couple of secret glory holes in here as well. So I don't know if it's really good fishing and if, if we get enough people come in that warrant it, uh, I said to Toon, maybe pop another another little platform there. Oh, a little bit of shade, lovely. Good old Twiggy. Let's see if we can get a pan round here. When you stood up here, it looks huge. But honestly, the, the goats have explored this a couple of times now. And even with just 19 goats running around out there, you just start to think, hang on a minute, that's not as big as you think it is. So this is all going to be grassed up the island. Uh, there will be a few trees dotted around that they don't, they don't seem to show much interest in. And behind Twiggy here is the old quicksand pond. That's where Toon and I did our hunter gathering video where we drained that and uh, caught plenty of fish in there, most of which went into the lake. I can hear the chainsaws going. There's a, there's a team of guys with four trucks and two chainsaws going and cutting down eucalyptus left, right and centre. I, I think it's mainly because no one's got any crops left in the field, so eucalyptus is the last thing that's been uh, being harvested. So almost back round. It's a nice walk. I mean, it's nice now and it's as barren as anything. So when it's all planted up, it's going to look lovely. Hopefully the water will never ever get to any, anywhere near this low level in the future. It's just because we've increased the volume during the dry season. Once this gets filled right up to the top full capacity, I, I can't see it ever being like this ever again. Well, I bloody hope not. Now, for those of you that uh, are really into your fishing in Thailand, you'll appreciate now we've had a full walk round that, um, although this looks huge, it's 75% it's island and 25% fishing lake. Um, so, yes, there's going to be a good stock of fish in here, but it's not going to be something like 
Um, you, you see on the internet, you know, Gillims or uh, Palm Tree Lagoon or IT Monster Lake, anything like that. Yeah, there are going to be some really big fish in here, but it's not going to be overstocked with them like the other places. And to be quite honest, you know, if you're into your, your big fish and you want to you know, sort of like a chance of a world record fish, then go to them guys. It's uh, They're incredible places with some incredible fish. Um, but you're looking, you know, for a decent a decent lake between four and 8,000 bar a day. Which I suppose if you're getting a fish of a lifetime or a few fish of a lifetime, um, some people think that's a bargain, you know. If I was only going to be able to afford one holiday to Thailand and I wanted to catch the biggest fish in my life, I want to give myself the best chance, I'd go to there and get a guide, go to one of those places. But ours is a real mixed fishery, so you're not going to have to use really, really heavy gear. I mean, the fish can't... You might have to run round the lake with the fish if you want to fish light. But I've never been into... Um, sort of like using boat rods and all that sort of thing. I, I'd prefer take an extra five or ten minutes playing a fish on nicely balanced tackle and uh, getting them in that way. So here is the location of where the big goat house is going to be. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about calling it the goat mothership because it is going to be monstrous. And I've suggested to tune, but. You know guys what it's like we can only suggest can't we uh, if we start it round about here and build it that way as we increase the numbers in the herd we can increase the size of the goat house accordingly so we can just keep going across for further and further across there that's the idea anyway over here Toon's got this like little house on the prairie thing running around in her head. Towards Macro Man Point, she wants to build a little, what could we call, like a little farm stay building. Not a proper house, it'd be open at the sides, but you know, slatted wood, something like that, or bamboo little bit raised off the ground and uh, a loo there as well so if someone wanted to rent that and they could come out here I'm thinking in the future what our plans are to get like a a young couple from somewhere like Burma and uh, sponsor them get them a work permit and get them to actually live on our land and work with us full time so maybe they could stay in that I don't think Toon's really up for that. She is up for getting a couple of people from Burma to come over here. No one seems interested around here. It's, just, it's like uh, banging your head against a brick wall. People are now asking for 450 baht a day just to do just general work. So I can jog on, unless it's something like building work or something. So yeah, here, uh, just behind Macro Man Point, maybe we're going to pop something here. Yeah, it looks huge. It really does look huge, but honestly, it is not. Some people that have come here think it's bigger than what they expected. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, perhaps we've been looking at it for so long now. So the, go the goats won't be staying on here full time. We will be moving them around the land. We've got a hundred posts on order. They should be here any day. Well, they should have been here a few days ago. We've ordered more fencing and that's one of the next big projects as well. We've got a guy coming tomorrow um, to work with Toon on the little solar room between the four fish ponds. After that, it will be a little bit of fencing work and then onto the goat house. We've got an absolute massive load of used timbers from an old house, totally termite free. And uh, we picked it up at a bargain price, 10,000 baht. And it looks like we've got enough to do the goat house 
and hopefully these little uh, designated fishing stroke camping areas as well. So in an ideal world all we'll have to be buying is the, the concrete posts and the roofing sheets for the goat house. Uh, maybe a couple of maybe a few big supporting timbers as well for the flooring to go on but apart from that it looks like we're sorted for timber. Uh, we did think about doing it all in metal uh, but it's just a price thing. I know metal would last forever but this is uh, mostly my sack and coconut wood. It's all been treated years ago. We'll treat it again and say that it's, it's clear. Really good stuff. We'll show you that on another video. Uh, after one rain a lot of the uh, the rough ground is smoothed off now. You see the ground is it's getting a lot lot more balanced. When you get the heavy rain out here it doesn't take long. Just imagine all that greened up planted up, loads of goats on there, people pulling in big fish, barbecues going, beers being cracked open and uh, having a lovely whale of a time and um, away from the madding crowd. Can't be bad can it? Who'd have thunk it? A numpty from the UK helping to create something like this. We're going to leave our mark on this land, that's for sure, whatever happens in the future. Mrs. just shouted me in to get some mango. Can't be bad, can it? <laughs>